Okay. Fire away. It's that time of the year where we look back and reflect upon the movies that have gone by this year. Some good, some bad, and some people we look at and think, remind me why I watched this again? Folks, this is the end of year 2011 Skype panel for special features, and I'm your Christmas Knight, MJ Knight, along with my reliable partner in crime, X24 Rider. Hey there, MJ. What's up? One of my Hi. faithful little helpers as ever, the the ever-talented and very unappreciated Nick Nugent. Hey, MJ. Great to be here. Likewise. The ever-passionate Duran Garber. Hello, MJ. Thank you for the invite, and hi to all of you. Thank you. The Phoenix, that is the Firebird. Greetings, everyone. Sorry I've been gone for too long. I had some uh, technical issues. Yep. Uh, the Commander. Great to be back. And to our own Christmas angel herself, Noom26. Sup, bitches. Hmm. Not very Christmassy, but we'll run with it. <laughs> Uh, up for um, for critiquing and give our own two cents on give it for what we will for this year we've got Green Lantern Fast Five, Transformers 3 now Nick specifically requested Pirates 4, Sucker Punch the Conan remake and other ones that to throw into the mix X-Men First Class, Captain America and Noom specifically requested the Muppets movie Muppets are amazing and everyone knows, Thanks, and everyone knows my feelings about the Muppets ever since the Halloween episode of Monday Night Raw. But I'm going to put that aside this evening. Um, yeah, we know Nick. Um, Ryder, any particular movie out of that list you want to start us off with first? I mean, I'll start with uh, Green Lantern. Go, uh, go ahead. Okay, but, I mean, I was quite so happy to there, see. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I was quite happy to see uh, a different superhero on the big screen. I mean, they've been, we've had Spider-Man, we've had Batman, we've had Superman, but Lantern has been overdue a movie for a while, so it was nice to see something fresh, something different. And for what the movie was, I really enjoyed it. I mean, I know there's a lot of people out there that uh, didn't really fancy it for what it was, but overall, I enjoyed it, and hopefully there will be a sequel. I felt that um, Ryan Reynolds was very good as Hal Jordan, uh, CG was questionable in places, but overall it was a decent movie and it felt fresh. So, you know, I was very pleased with what Green Lantern was and uh, bought it on DVD, and it was, uh, yeah, really good. I liked it. Uh, what was your take on uh, Green Lantern, Nick? Because I think you were quite vocal about this one. <laughs> I'm kind of afraid to go into it because I don't want to come across as Mr. Negativity, but I thought it was a train wreck. <laughs> Nothing about it made any sense to me. All right. If you've got all the powers of the universe and, and and your imagination at your disposal, why would you? I don't know. I don't. I can't go in into details without getting in the spoiler country. Get but, on with it. Uh, <laughs> Get yeah, on with it. <laughs> it's this whole thing about like stopping a helicopter by turning it into a Hot Wheels set and then. Uh, Using two jets in outer space to fight uh, Legion or whatever, it's like it's such a small scale compared to Sinistro, who channels a huge brick wall and a, a sun with its own gravitational pull and so many other useful concepts, you know. And then, like, the, t the teaser at the end when Sinistro turns evil or whatever and goes after the, the fear power, it doesn't make any sense to me. Like, there, there's there's no substance to that story. It's like, it's, it's so rushed and, and tacky. Mm -hmm. uh, except for, like, the actual script was decent, but sort of like with Nightmare on Elm Street, they had a great script, and then they made a shooting script, and they hacked out all the things that would make the story coherent. Mm -hmm. uh, probably in favor of putting deleted scenes on a DVD or whatever, but Mm -hmm. uh, bottom line is, I just I didn't uh, I didn't care for it at all. It's, it's it was too okay. um, it was too lazy for such a great character with so much potential. Mm. All right, Duran, did you see? Like Sorry, Nick. No, go ahead. Okay, uh, Duran, did you see Green Lantern? Absolutely. Um, 
I thought Ryan Reynolds, Blake Lively, Tim Robbins, Angela Bassett, Peter Sarsgaard, and Mark Strong all play very good roles. Opening scene where uh, the Green Lanterns uh, go on that planet Riot or something, Lost Sect, uh, uh, Awakening Parallax uh, was interesting. But where Parallax uh, awakens, he says something like, You're afraid? Good. And then he <laughs> goes like, Wow. You know, that was hell scary, you know. And uh, uh, Ryan Reynolds doing the, the flight test was. Uh, Oh man, that was great, you know, um, <laughs> the, the, the testing the aircraft up to its limit, you know, that, that was interesting. I mean, the one scene that was very hilarious to me uh, was that um, where Al was trying to test the ring and he said, uh, to infinity and beyond, by the powers of grace. <laughs> I think that could laugh. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> but but uh, I thought the movie was very good, you know. Uh, we, we unmistakably, we can see all the CG effects and everything, and um, uh, where uh, Ryan Reynolds was trying to. Uh, where that um, lantern tries to teach him how to overcome fear and everything, that was very good. Uh, where What was very good to me was uh, at the end where uh, that guy, um, uh, Tim Robbins' son in the movie, uh, he tried to uh, yeah. put the ring on, but uh, then Ryan Reynolds told him, you have to be chosen. And, the, uh, yeah. and then he saves um, a Blake Lively and... To me, overall, the whole movie was very good, you know? All right. But Parallax was very frightening. <laughs> uh, Commander, did you see Green Lantern? Oh, yeah. I've been a fan ever since the new Millennium Justice League commercial or TV show, and I was like, okay, this is on top of my must-see list. Uh, Ryan Reynolds, when you consider movies like uh, Waiting, The Change-Up, cra that crap, compared to that, this was phenomenal. Easily one of uh, one of his best uh, works yet. Um, CGI was amazingly done. I got to agree with uh, Gar Gerber, Garber, whatever. Uh, that's how it's pronounced. Duran. Yeah. Um, the Grace Skull part was pretty funny. Um, <laughs> but let me. <laughs> Thanks. I'm gonna be laughing about that during the whole thing. Thank you. Uh, anyway. Um, when I saw him doing, doing the oath, I just sat there and I'm like, I actually repeated, uh, repeated it and I'm like, oh shit. But going back to what you said, Ed Duran, Parallax, holy shit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Uh, personally, I very much enjoyed it. CGI was great. Acting was uh, awesome. Uh, it did have its moments, though, but, All right. you know. Ah, oh, damn it. Hello? Go. Fibro, that's your bet. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> Let's see. Um, Green Lantern. I haven't seen the movie yet. Okay. Um, Noon, did My you apologies. Noon, did you see it at all? What, Green Lantern? Yeah. No, I didn't. All right, and as always, you guys are curious to know what I thought. Um... Yeah. Going into it, you know, having seen what recent incarnations of Superman and Batman have done, it's like, all right, we've seen what you guys have done on the big screen longer than most people could care to mention. But with Green Lantern, never been done on the big screen. And for what it was worth, yeah, there were a few things wrong with it. There were certain bits and pieces that, that they could have leveled out and made a little bit more sense of. But... For what it was worth, uh, I gave it a modest, um, good flick bargain, as I normally do uh, with these reviews. Um, yeah, I know, Nick, you're always very critical of things, but um, you know, I, I took it. I took it for what it was worth. You know, it was it was a nice popcorn flick. Let's leave it at that. It was it was entertaining. Yeah. 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 All right. Um, 
like I, like I said, Noom wanted very much to get uh, the Muppets on here, so uh, as ever, you've got the floor. Oh, I, I get to talk first? Yes. Oh, man. I get to talk first about the Muppets. Well, anyways, I saw the Muppet movie with this guy who I know from my high school. It was pretty cool. We saw Muppets. Um, and uh, I, I was pretty blown away. Like, going in, I was a little bit like, uh, it's kind of the Muppets, you know? I mean, like, the Muppets are great, but, like, um, uh, what what am I saying here? Uh I don't. I guess I don't. I don't know. I'm not really that familiar with them, and I. I don't really know how funny they are. But they, it was. It was really. I. I thought it was a really good movie. I mean, it was kind of silly. There were like little moments where they'd break the fourth wall and be like, you know, well, you know, everybody in the audience is going to be disappointed when they see this happen, or like, you know, like little things like that. And, oh. and they had Neil Patrick Harris in it for a little bit, which was cool. Um. Yeah. My my criteria for what makes a movie good, pretty much. Um relies entirely on whether or not Neil Patrick Harris was in it and uh, <laughs> whether or not, like, it's wacky and it breaks the fourth wall occasionally. It was just, it was the perfect movie. You know, I, I there was not one bit of it I didn't enjoy. Um, also, Jason Siegel was funny. I usually don't like Jason Siegel unless it's in Freak, uh, unless he's in, like, Freaks and Geeks or something, but, like, I thought he was good and yeah, it's, it was like the best movie of all time. I give it six stars out of five. It's great, and you guys should all watch it and and shut the fuck up about superhero movies, please. The end. <laughs> Kieran, someone's in the Christmas mood. Uh, Nick, you saw Muppet movie as well, didn't you? I remember you saying over Facebook uh, chat, it's like, when does the fucking concert start? <laughs> Oh, we're doing the profanity thing this time? Hey, I, hey, I took the PG um, filter off on the announce table, which I might have vouched for. I have to disagree. Uh, but oh my God. I guess I come from a different time where I expect more from a movie. I thought The Muppets was terrible. Uh, they break into a song every ten minutes in the movie. It drove me nuts. It was overly it's a family fancy, but you kind of movie. That's like what that's what they do. It's a family film. What do you no, expect? No, that's not what they do. They do have songs, but they don't break into a song every ten in the minutes. The Muppet Show is a song. Every single one. That's like what they do. That's like half of the Muppets is singing. Yeah, half I'm sorry. Of the is <laughs> Didn't you watch a baby Muppet show on movie? I used to watch that cartoon when I was a kid. If you compare the Muppets to, say, Muppet Treasure Island or Muppet Christmas Carol, it's vastly different. It's overly cheesy. And the thing that really irritated me the most is the Muppets take a back seat to the human characters, which I felt very conflictive. Uh, it's cool that Jason... Uh, is that his name? Jason Eagle. something. The Jason, Jason Siegel's Eagle character and, and the, uh, the Muppet that wants to be Sarah human... Marshall. You know, have this uh, this whole thing about character identity of being human or being a Muppet, but it's like all the other Muppets take a back seat to that. And what probably irritated me the most is that Miss Piggy isn't even Frank Oz, and I can tell the difference. And it just Ouch. sounded very that. off to me. Uh, that's just probably that. a small thing because if you, you examine the story itself, it's. It's a fairly simple story. I really like the Muppet Show, but it takes them forever to get to the concert. And when they start <clears> doing the concert, then it feels like a Muppet movie up until that point. It just seems kind of like it's going through the motions. But the comedy wasn't really on par with the previous movies. I just didn't feel it. It, it, it didn't make me really laugh that much. And... You know, compared to the previous Muppet movies like the Muppet, Great Muppet Caper and uh, Muppets Take Manhattan, which I think was the most solid of the Muppet. Oh movies. yes, that is my favorite. Uh, the last movie I remember did... was the uh, was the yeah. space movie. Yeah. All right. Nick, I hate to say it, but your your opinion is wrong. Um... <laughs> well, I said the same thing about yours. So Dude, your 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 opinion is wrong. My opinion is. The right opinion. Guys, so, yeah. it's the internet. Everyone is <laughs> everyone's entitled to their own opinion. Well, no, no, Nick child, isn't entitled to this, adult, so. this opinion anymore. The internet. Nick isn't, Nick isn't serious to business. 
All right. Uh, who else saw the the Muppet movie besides Nick and Noom? I did uh, not. Sadly, yeah. Sadly, not me. But I was gonna make a comment towards uh, Rage's. Well, they break the fourth wall all the time. That's they've been doing that for years. Mm. Yeah, I know. That's why it's a Muppet movie. I grew I grew up on the Muppets, but I never saw the Muppet movie yet. So I can't really review it. Fair enough. Unless I see it for myself. Okay. Uh, Duran, did you see it? No. All right. Neither. All right. Uh, we'll move on to one of the one of the other movies we got listed up now. With Fast Five, you know, with you know the Fast and the Furious movie, it, it's almost become like a, a tried and tested method ever since the first movie showed up in two thousand and one, and we've had now, as I understand it. Tokyo Drift is meant to be the very last movie in the series. So we had Fast and Furious prequeling, or what is now known as an interquel, before Tokyo Drift. And now we've got Fast Five, which is still prequeling Tokyo Drift. Tokyo Drift. Yeah. And I found with Fast Five, now I know Nick's opinion on this, but I found that Fast Five was a lot better in terms of writing compared to the fourth movie. It, It was just something about it. And it wasn't because of the great one having an appearance uh, in a great franchise like that. Something just gelled and worked with it. And in some ways, it felt like a nice way for the characters to kind of end that story. But we know that it's going to go into another movie because somehow Letty has uh, managed to escape death. Yeah, I'm scratching my head over that one. I'm like, okay, I'm (laughs) going to leave this one alone. But in yeah. terms of the characters and the cars and, you know, the, the way that the camaraderie bounced off of each of the characters, particularly with the likes of uh, Tyrese coming back, him bouncing off of Dominic Toretto and then Brian O'Connor, it, it just works. Um, I felt, honestly, I think I remember when I saw this originally in April... I gave the movie a dang that was good. Because as you all know, guys, I'm not run-of-the-mill when it comes to my rating system. I will say how I feel, and as far as I was concerned, it wasn't a case of, you know, you must see this, but it was definitely an improvement based upon what had gone before. Agreed. Um, Right, just so we can keep this flowing, anyone else who's seen Fast Five other than Nick... I'm not yep. a car guy by any means. I have not seen it. Okay. I've, I've seen, seen it. it. I've seen it. I've seen it. All right. I've seen it. All right. Okay, guys. Let's keep our comments short and sweet. Firebird, go. Well, well, of course, I saw it. I And I have to agree with you, MJ. I, I really liked this movie. I remember going to the theater one evening with my sister. All she offered to just take me over to watch the movie with her. I accepted. So... And I, I've been a big fan of the Fast and Furious franchise for for as long as it's been around. Save for Tokyo Drift, I didn't really like that movie that much. Hmm. Fast and Furious, I saw on my birthday when it came out. All right. I thought it was a little better than Tokyo Drift. But as for this one, it was just it was so full of action. I mean, how can, it was actually good to see The Rock act as himself yeah. in this one. He was acting so... <laughs> Oh, I'm a big, badass, tough guy. <laughs> All right. Uh, Duran, what was your thoughts on the, the fifth installment? Well, I really enjoyed it. I mean, what Okay, what I did, didn't get is, um, okay, Han gets killed in uh, Tokyo Drift, but then we see him coming back, you know? That yeah. was strange. It's well, a prequel. Well, it's like I said, this is a yeah. prequel interquel. It's, you know, before and after, if that makes any sense to you. Mm. Yeah. I mean, the train scene where they steal the cars, that was that was really good. Um, yeah, that was that awesome. That was fun. Uh, it was yeah. just a shame. I mean, uh, it was, oh, sorry. It was just a shame that they wrecked that uh, Chevrolet Corvette Stingray. Oh, yeah, that was nice. Uh, what? <laughs> oh, no. I was like, please I don't bet, wreck this one. I bet if my dad saw that, he would want one of those. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, uh, the, 
the way they carefully planned how to rob those that cash. I mean, where they've uh, swapped the empty can, uh, safe for the real safe. That was pure genius. I, mean, I know. Uh, no one saw that coming, but uh, but the two cars dragging the safe all over town. I know. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was brilliant. Yeah. All right. Next. And, I mean, the rock. Go ahead. All right. Um, so, uh, but, Finish it. Finish up, Joanne. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there. Oh no, no. Uh, and uh, but I must confess, the rock really played a really badass role, you know. Yeah. It did seem a lot more and, natural uh, for him. Yeah, and uh, that scene. Okay, like you mentioned, Derek, uh, where they uh, destroy the city with that safe. That was <laughs> that was so fun to watch, you know. Yeah. <laughs> And I just want to get this out of the way. There was actually a revelation for Paul Walker's character that, oh, what's her character's name? I can't, it, the name escapes me, but I know who it is. It's Jordana's character. Oh, I know who you mean. I know, I know the, I know, yeah. I know the There's a revelation that she was expecting, and yeah. Paul Walker's yeah. character is the daddy. Yes. Yeah. I just want to get that out of the way. All right. Hmm. That was, I was not seeing, I did not see that coming, to be honest. No. All right, Nick, um, your thoughts on Fast Five? Uh, her name's Mia, by the way. Oh, um, thank you, thank you. I thought the Fast Five was a fun movie, but vastly different than the previous installments. I actually didn't like the idea of them basically taking Ocean's Eleven and use, doing the same kind of setup and beats with cars. Uh, I was not surprised by the twist at the end. I expected it was coming. Yeah, I was um, not expecting that at all. But uh, I, I have studied story a lot, so I sort of see these beats and, and understand the pacing and, and these sort of things. But uh, I thought it was very different. Um, they always sort of skittered around breaking the law, but they never really intentionally did it and. It felt like they lost a lot of that uh, heroic feel. Like if you look at Fast and Furious, uh, the fourth one, there, you know, Toretto is going after the one guy Braga to avenge Letty's death. It's a very noble thing, you know. And in uh, uh, was it Too Fast, Too Furious? Uh, they're going after another guy. They sort of have a purpose. In this one, they're just basically you know, bank robbers on wheels, and I didn't really feel like the character development was there, was strong enough for that. I expected better, I guess. Uh, But um, I did like The Rock, although I felt it very bizarre that he helped them take the money Mm. when he was so adamantly against them. I didn't understand where the uh, dynamic change comes into play. I think it's because... Uh, I think and the then rock... he changes back into being the good guy again, saying, well, I'm not going to let you get away with taking the money to set up his role for the next I, one. Actually, I think he lets them get a head start. And I think The Rock changes because, well, when the when the cast was in captivity by The Rock, they were yep. they were attacked, and yeah. Vin, Vin's character, Dominic, they had to team up in order to survive. And The Rock's character keep forgetting his name it's been a while since i've seen the movie he decides to help out mainly to avenge his fallen teammates Hmm. but he helps them take the safe out of the he helps them break in and take the money yeah and he actually has that really cool um that vehicle that broke right through the wall if i remember it right it's like an armored plated car i think yeah i know which one you mean calls it the gorilla i think something all right i wish we had one of those (laughs) Okay, moving on. Yep. All right. Um, one uh, other movie I want to. I didn't. I didn't say my part about Fast Five. Oh, oh, you, oh, did you, oh, you saw it right. I'll beg your pardon. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, I mean, since Tokyo Drift, I felt the Fast and the Furious franchise was probably dead in the water. But then when it when it came back with Fast Four, if we can call it that, in yeah. two thousand eight, um, it was better. But what with Fast Five did, it upped the action much more than Fast Four. I mean, Fast Four had a good script and story, but the action was slightly lacking, yeah. I felt. But still a good movie. So when I saw Fast Five and it was going to be Paul Walker, Vin Diesel, the whole gang back, even Tyrese came back as well. Yeah. You know, 
this is what I wanted to see. And the car action was great. The rock was great. It, it just pretty much did what an action movie should do. It's junk food for the brain. Just sit back, enjoy the ride, just appreciate all the destruction that happens. You know, it's a Fast and Furious movie. Yep. You know, and it was just such an enjoyable flick. You know, it was nice to see, um, you know, the prospect of a, a sixth movie. Whether or not it will be any any good or not, I don't know. But mm. but for me, Fast Five was a solid action movie and does what it should do. Yeah. Also, uh, on that note of destruction. Now, I went and saw this just before my uh, my birthday uh, back in the summer. Now, we know f in the last four years of what Transformer movies are capable of. The first one had the the right kind of script, but didn't really have the uh, the kind of budget to back the uh, the action. And then with Revenge of the Fallen. Bigger budget, more action, story was a little lacking. I felt with Transformers 3 Armageddon, screw you, Michael Bay, my title's better. Um, <laughs> sorry, uh, Transformers Armageddon just sounds a hell of a lot better than Dark of the Moon. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, I felt story-wise, they kind of managed to find the balance between human um, screen time and um, and robot screen time and it's like I said um, in episode 51 when I reviewed that at the end of June I have not seen an you know a, an epic scale of destruction on film since Independence Day back in 1996 and it it just really took you know as far as Transformers movies were concerned this was a game changer in my estimation um, you kind of, you, you know, there was deception, betrayal, um, Megatron getting relegated again. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, no, nice. And it, it kind of just, you know, really sort of, sort of made you sort of think, you know, when is this destruction going to stop? And I felt <laughs> the only thing that the movie really suffered from is that it went on a little bit too long. It, it could have oh, yeah, been. It, dragged quite yeah. A bit. yeah, yeah, it, it, yeah. It could have been shortened by at least twenty to thirty minutes, and yeah. I think I think uh, Bay has taken the hint to try and balance out Optimus Prime's character because the first movie he's a pushover from Megatron. The second one, he he's kind of stepped his game up, in, but in this one, one arm goes and takes out Megatron again. <laughs> but, but, uh, yeah, and he straight up kills him. He doesn't even give him any mercy. He just, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was a nice yeah, touch. Yeah, that's why it lasted a little too fast. Yeah, and I thought it was a nice touch to have Leonard Nimoy as the voice of Sentinel Prime. I thought, okay. But yeah. when they had to throw in Spock's dying words, and I thought, oh, you've got to be kidding me. They're throwing in Star Trek references. I thought, okay, okay, I'm going to leave this alone. <laughs> that movie's actually played with quite a bit of uh, Star Trek references. Yeah. I thought, really I, thought we, close. I, thought, I thought Leonard Nimoy announced he was going to retire before Transformers 3. I think he, no. I... He's retiring from convention circuits and signing autographs. All right. Oh, Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Because he, he's blind as a bat. You know, his wow. eyesight is really gone. Wow. Hmm. I but, didn't uh, know that. But, um, you know, as far as, you know, uh, Transformer movie goes, this is definitely the best one that they've done in the entire series, um, for my two cents. Uh, anyway, in a nutshell, best Transformers movie so far ever as far as I'm concerned, is, and I stand by my rating back in the summer, it's movie of the summer, and you must see this, and uh, it's also, like I said at the end of that review, hey, Megan, best you wouldn't have had to said it now, you, you lousy no-talent hack bitch. <laughs> Burn. Not very oh, Christmassy, Kevin. I will kill if she's cast for the Mass Effect movie. Hey, considering how no, no. considering how she got booted off of Transformers for that comment on Steven Spielberg, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Stu the stupid bitch deserved what she had coming to her. Sorry, you don't go saying that in bu in the public eye and get away with it. I'm sorry. Merry Christmas, everybody. Indeed. Megan right. Fox is a bitch. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Freaking, freaking oh, Kevin no. getting on my case. Like, oh, you stop saying the fuck word, but it's okay to say that Megan Fox is like this massive whore. 
<laughs> anyway, Nick, Transformers. Sorry, Sam. Right, Nick, Transformers Armageddon. Your call as always. Well, like I said, there's two critical flaws in the movie, but I'm not going to get into it because I don't want to spoil it for people who haven't seen the movie. Fair enough. Uh, I think it was the most action-packed. I enjoyed. Uh, I enjoyed a lot about it. Um, I felt uh, that Optimus Prime vengeance with Prime felt a little awkward at the end, just considering that. When he went up against Sentinel Prime earlier in the movie, Sentinel Prime grants him mercy several times. Mm. Uh, he doesn't return that favor. Mm. Um, I like the look of it. I like the scope. But I think that it really dragged. And the whole thing with the office... Uh, office... Uh, what would you call that? Uh, uh, I, I'm just going to say fiasco, you know, with John Malkovich and all this stuff that goes on yeah. there. It seemed like it didn't need to be in the movie to have a good movie. It was very no. kind of, oh, let's make a part for John Malkovich because he's a big name kind of thing. Mm. Um, I realize that he played a part in the plot, but it just seemed really, like, uh, unnecessary, you know. Um, we know the Decepticons are coming to bring hell on Earth, and... We didn't need to go into that direction to, to figure that out. Okay. But uh, I like the designs. I really like Sentinel Prime. I like the twist with Sentinel Prime, which we all know was coming uh, because of the Star Trek references. It was kind of thrown in your face. But, um, mm. yeah, right. you know, I, I think that it's a stupid title. Everyone thinks it's a stupid title about, like, <laughs> Batman, the Dark Knight rises to a conclusion, but that's another panel. Yeah. Uh, you know, but it, it is a good movie, and you should check it out if you like Transformers. I, I think it really redeemed a lot of the ridiculous mistakes of the second movie. Ugh. Uh, I'll leave it there. Oh. All right. Um, Ryder, did you see uh, Transformers Armageddon at all? Because I think I remember you commenting saying that, that the 3D was a little bit unnecessary. Uh, yeah, I did see Transformers 3. Um, no, I mean, no, the 3D was okay. I just felt I should have watched it as it was because I had to keep reminding myself I had 3D glasses on. But um, no, for what it was, it was way better than number two. You know, it was massive Without improvement. Uh, the action was superb. I mean, visual effects, special effects, damn. I've never seen anything that destructive no. ever. It was truly mind-blowing and fair play to everyone who worked on that sequence, you know. Yeah. Throughout the last part of the movie. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Industrial Light and Magic for the win. Yep. Oh, definitely, definitely. They deserve everything they get for that. That was literally unbelievable. Um, Indeed. Uh, the, the only things I didn't like was the parents were back and they lied uh, to us. Bear, you lied and to I just us felt... on my mission! <laughs> <laughs> lie. But, um, lie. Again, and also, I just felt that there was um, lots of comedy in there that didn't need to be in there. It's just like, please stop this. It's not funny. Leave it. But yeah. apart from that, I mean, I can at least skip that with a DVD, thank goodness. Um, the runtime, yeah, was a little long, but it doesn't hurt the movie, really. Uh, I just felt that Megatron was a little bit downplayed as well towards the end. Just a you know, it was like, okay, yeah. But, you know, for an action-packed Transformers movie, yeah, superb. It had its flaws, but it was still entertaining, and it was still, it was still great to watch it on the big screen, because that's what it's for. That's what it does. But for me personally, the first movie will always be my favorite. Fair you know, but uh, overall, I wouldn't say it was movie of the summer, but it was certainly one to watch on the big screen and, you know, very action packed. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Firebird. Keep it short. I haven't seen it. Oh. I haven't seen Transformers yet, though. I did glimpse at it when my brother was watching it, though. I didn't watch the whole thing. I only glimpsed at it. I think it was one action sequence of Sam who was in the Camaro I think there was one instance and I haven't seen the whole movie I just glimpsed at it I remember seeing I remember Sam was in the Camaro or Bumblebee and he fell right out when he transformed and yeah almost an instant he was right back in the driver's seat when he changed back all right I don't know cool. when it is I don't know I haven't I have to see the entire movie okay uh the commander 
your thoughts. Maybe I'll keep it short and sweet. Yeah, I'll try. Uh, I thought it was, it was very good. Uh, graphics were beautiful. Visuals were amazing. Thank God for uh, getting rid of Megan Fox. Thank oh, God for getting rid of thank all you. Of thank you. Thank <laughs> God. Thank God for getting rid of all the sex and drugs jokes. Uh, and you've seen this from me before on Facebook, MJ. I'm waiting for uh, Transformers 4 with Unicron. <laughs> That would be interesting to see that pulled off, but that would be a little bit. I, yeah. I just want to get this out of the way real quick. Compared to Megan Fox, the new girl can can act. She's all she's just a lot better. Yeah. Mm. A lot better, but nothing she, special, really. Yeah. Was was this, was the same actress in Fast Five? No. no. We don't know yet. Oh, my mistake. <laughs> No, Megan. No, Megan Fox needs hell because she's got to fight off all the people that hate her freaking guts, Duran. Um. Anyway, uh, Duran, do you want to get your quick two cents in on uh, Transformers Armageddon? Well, the reason why I said that Megan Fox needs help because uh, she's a real nutcase. That's why I said it. <laughs> no, 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 no. To call Megan Fox a nutcase would be an improvement. What what foxes? There's no word in the English dictionary for that. <laughs> okay. To me, Transformers: Dark of the Moon was very very good. I mean, um, there were certain things uh, that were included in this movie that were part of the cartoon. I mean, like Rosie Huntington uh, playing Carly. Carly's yeah. in. Um, yeah. Uh, there was also a character in the cartoon yeah. like that, and I was glad about that. Mm -hmm. The Apollo scene uh, at the beginning was very good, mm. where they, uh, Peter Cullen, Leonard Nimoy, and the rest of the gang um, mm. also played very good roles. Patrick Dempsey was a very uh, yeah, good villain. Yeah, I was a bit surprised to see him in a Transformers movie, but it works. Yeah, yeah. I was so uh, glad that Frank Welker played Soundwave and Shockwave again. <laughs> it works. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. I mean, um, Laserbeak was very badass. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, but, okay, uh, Leonard Nimoy uh, for uh, Sentinel Prime was a very good choice, but what I didn't get is, where does Sentinel Prime come in? I mean, they don't even mention Sentinel Prime in the cartoon, you know? Hmm. But then again, the movie, I mean, the movie storylines are completely different continuity, though. Oh crap! Because um, Holy uh, because um, the in the cartoon they explained that Alpha Trion was uh, the leader of the Autobots, and then Optimus Prime came, became the leader. Yeah. But where the hell does Sentinel Prime come? I, uh, I but, don't uh, know. Uh, but, oh, the G one cartoon. Never mind. Um, but uh, that's the scene where the uh, building. Uh, a tilt to the side. Oh man, that was fantastic! All right. Where the uh, building breaks, uh, oh, yeah. and uh, I was surprised that Optimus Prime uh, was being uh, giving no mercy to Sentinel Prime and Megatron because normally he's the one that fights uh, uh, our Autobots should fight, you know. Mm. But other yeah, I agree. But uh, to me, um, the movie was 10 out of 10 for me. All right. And this is the segment where I shall now reveal my pick for Christmas, what will be on people's wish list. Now, as everyone knows, um, I selected Green Lantern, Fast Five, Transformers Armageddon, Captain America, and the Jurassic Park trilogy for the first time on Blu-ray. And I'm going with Jurassic Park simply because the way that the footage has been restored faithfully and that the way that all the extra features are on there, I don't think there's anything that can touch it this year. This is the one that's going to be on people's wish list. If people agree or disagree with me, that's entirely up to you. But as you know, guys, I march to a different beat. How I roll. Yes, I know, Nick. All right. Now we'll move on to X-Men First Class. Um, 
Noom, your thoughts? Um, I liked it. I I really I really got a kick out of it. Um, sorry about the background noise. That's my dad. But anyways, <laughs> um, I uh, um. I, I enjoyed it. Like, I mean, I've, I've seen the first three, you know, and those were pretty good, but, um, you know, I, I, I like my Kevin Bacon and, um, yeah, it's, it's cool. <laughs> I'm trying to think of like specific things. It's been like kind of a while since I've seen it and I saw it with somebody who I'm not on good terms with, uh, on good terms with anymore. So I'm a little bit like, eh, I don't really want to remember that movie. <laughs> okay. Um, but I do remember I saw it, and I do remember I enjoyed it. Um, my only question was, like, you know, there was this one flashback, I think, in X-Men 3, where you saw, um, oh, God, I forget his name, but he's Picard. Um, Patrick, Patrick Stewart. Stewart. <laughs> Patrick Stewart. There we go. Oh, gosh, everybody's texting me. I'm really sorry. So you see Patrick Stewart, like, standing. Like, he's, like, out of his wheelchair, and he walks up to, like, you know... Jean Grey's house in like a in, a, in like a flashback or whatever, and um, but then like in in this movie it's like oh no he and and in that movie he was like really old you know he was like you know whatever but in the old, the uh, X Men First Class he he uh, pretty much gets put in a wheelchair like I guess like what in his late twenties you know so I guess I'm like wait what is this like set in the sixties is this like yeah, like, but, um, it just, like, I thought that he got put in a wheelchair later on in his life, but this movie seems to imply that he did not. Actually, it doesn't imply that he did not. It says, like, hey, this is how he got put in a wheelchair. But I, I recall in, in Last Stand, he was, like, standing up and he was being Picard about it and old. So, uh, I guess, I guess it's just, like, continuity, or I'm, I'm not sure if maybe it's, like, its own continuity, because I know sometimes movies do that and they do their own thing. Um, it's a narrative. Then, uh, but I, I enjoyed it, and I liked the. I'm gonna flip the coin, and I liked Magneto, and like his whole backstory with the Holocaust and all that. Yeah, because like they they had the Holocaust in the other movies too. Like, oh, this is why Magneto's so pissed off at human beings, because you know some of them were Nazis. Um. But uh, you know, I enjoy, fuck. Stop texting me. So, but I, I enjoyed it. Um, anybody else, you know? Um, yeah, I thought it was pretty good. Mm. When I went and saw that, it was, it felt like it was like taking things from a, a different direction. You actually got like a proper backstory for uh, Magneto and Xavier. You, you know, rather than just go through these flashback scenes like you mentioned with uh, with uh, the last stand, you get sort of like a a flashback story to how Jean Grey came to be, but with this one, it was just nice just to be able to go that little bit deeper, and finally we get a backstory to Mystique at long last, and that she was actually just basically uh, Charles Xavier's sister, which I thought was kind of sweet in a way, you know, and you know, she kind of resents the fact that Xavier, Xavier, when you look about it, his only mutant power is moving things with his mind and being able to read, read people's minds. Other than that, he could walk around and nobody would think any of the wiser. But Mystique always has to cloak herself. And Michael Fassbender as Magneto, I just saw his performance and thought, damn. I thought, you know, this is a guy you do not want to knock his beer over at all. And for the way it... And, and the fact that they had a, you know, a Marvel movie set in the 60s, you know, where most of the comic books came from, with said exception of Captain America, but that was when it was timely comics in the late 30s and early 40s. I thought it was well done. It was a good ensemble cast. Uh, special effects were were decent. And, you know, I, I can't really knock the movie. I mean, it's probably why I gave it uh, a dang that was good back in June, because it was really enjoyable. Anything to add to that, Nick? I thought it was a pretty good movie. Um, again, I'm not going to get into spoiler territory, but there's something in there that kind of threw, uh, kind of ripped me out of the movie. Like I was along for the ride, and everything was great, and then this one thing happens, and I'm like, "What? Mm. Why? Why would they do that?" You know. But in terms of Mystique's backstory, I think it's interesting that they went back to her being a uh, a child with Xavier. 
Although from the comic book perspective, uh, she's as old as Wolverine, so that doesn't mm. actually work. But you got to understand, with First Class, they took a lot of creative liberties, and I think that for the oh, most part, uh, they did a great job. I like the Sebastian Shaw uh, with Kevin Bacon. Mm. And uh, the only thing I have that's a serious irritation with First Class is that Emma Frost was seriously miscast. You know, mm. there's, there's just nothing appealing to me about January Jones. She's got three facial expressions the entire movie. It's wow. Really felt like an injustice to the character. Uh, I really like Magneto, and I think the most uh, impactful thing I enjoyed about that movie was the music. I think the the soundtrack was really solid. Mm. And uh, that, for me, with an X Men movie, really helps me enjoy it. If it's a sloppy soundtrack, then you know yeah. that's one strike against it. But I think that that movie, um, as a prequel, did pretty well. Mm. Uh, I like the cameo with Wolverine, although <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> that, that was line that cool. Picked, but uh, <laughs> you know, uh, it it is what it is, and I, I think that. It was a well well done movie, and I went into it not really caring about it, so I was pleasantly surprised. Hmm. And uh, uh, I'm sorry, I think that's that's what I got to say. Uh, Ryder, did you see First Class? Uh, no, unfortunately, not. I haven't got around to seeing it yet. All right, um, Commando, yeah. did you? Yes. All right. Two parts. I like, uh, as I said, the Wolverine thing, uh, but. I thought the movie kind of contradicted the series a little bit. Little. Go back and watch, uh, go back and watch Lumberjack or uh, uh, Wolverine, and then watch this. Mm. If he was shot in the '60s, how the hell is he walking in uh, Wolverine? Mm. That's that's the thing that bugged me with uh, Wolverine. Yeah. I, that movie was great. Yep. All right, Duran. Yeah, I saw it. Um, I thought the relationship between uh, Xavier and Magneto was very good. Um, yep. how the, it builds up to how their friendship was and how they depart at the end. For me, um, Kevin Bacon's uh, character was very uh, interesting. I mean, I like the, how the helmet, uh, he puts the helmet on and everything, then he, nobody can touch him whatsoever. Mm. And uh, the my favorite part in the movie is the end, mm. where Magneto, uh, uh, where you see him in his whole, in his whole outfit, uh, where he frees that woman at the end. All right. Uh, and, uh, yeah, as I said, uh, it's, it was very good. And uh, the whole, as Rachel explained about the uh, Nazis and everything, how everything fell into place. That was very good. Mm. All right. Um, we'll now move on to Captain America. Right. And uh, since uh, we're having technical difficulties this evening, I'm going to keep this as short as possible. It was better than that crappy TV movie that they had over 20 years ago. I'm sorry. I cannot defend that movie at all. But the Chris Evans take on it, it was. It was. It felt like it was grounded very much in reality. I mean, when when Steve Rogers goes to punch you, you don't go flying fifty feet through the air. You just end up getting really, uh, really winded by it. Um, I first glance, Chris Evans doesn't seem like the most automatic choice to play Cap, given some of the roles he's played, like you know the Human Torch from Fantastic Four, who's pretty much an ass most of the time. But here, yeah. where he's this very humble. <gasps> meek uh, and willing to do guy who just wants to help his country I thought was a very huge contrast to what we had seen with his previous Marvel role but I enjoyed it uh, I felt the um, advanced technology for being in the 40s was a bit hokey and a little bit out of place but everything else I couldn't really fault the the movie for I like the relationship between him and Peggy Carter where it's almost like an implied romance but not really stretching that far and and as we all know captain america gets frozen in ice wakes up in the future except this time we knew full well peggy carter was not going to be there when he got back because you know 70 years into the future she would have been in her late 90s so probably not around by that point and um 
I really liked Tommy Lee Jones's part on there. He was good comic relief, and I liked uh, the actor who played the the doctor who developed the serum. And, and is it just me, or is he, or is Hugo Weaving getting cut typecast for for douchebag villain roles? Because he just seems to show up in <laughs> most of, mostly all of them these days. But all in all, aside, I think I was fair by giving Captain America a very modest. You must see this because it was genuinely well done. Anyone want to add anything to that? Mm. Okay, I'll go. Uh, oh wait, no, sorry, go away. I just thought what I was gonna say. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I hated the advanced technology. I hated that. All of uh, Hydra's, she uses the Cosmic Cube, you know, duplicated like a billion times, and everything mm -hmm. has a lens flare on it. It felt more like a G.I. Joe sequence to me than anything else. Uh, it really made it hard for me to understand the, te the time period that they shot that movie in when you've got all this hype technology going on. Uh, I also felt that the ending was rather rushed and kind of obscure, like... Why exactly did he have to crash the thing into the ocean? It didn't really resonate well with me. I, I know that's how the comic book goes, and they had to find a reason for him to get in the uh, ice and all that, but it just didn't seem like... It seems like they could have did better with that. Uh, you really don't get a chance to see Captain America be Captain America. Instead, you kind of get this collage of... Uh, action scenes that I guess are supposed to uh, build his legend. Uh, but I did like his relationship with his brother. Or is his brother Bucky? Is that his brother? or his No, it's just his friend. Uh, his friend Bucky, but Bucky's death is really underplayed and sort of mm. obscure. Yeah. It's kind of a throwaway death. Uh, but, you know, um, I think it was decent, but it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. It, it just kind of... I lost the suspension of disbelief very early in the movies as soon as they got the whole, like, duplicating the technology thing. And then there's, like, the bombs that fall, but they're really, like, planes, and they're bombs, but they can fly them. And, I, you know, the, the technology seemed really weird to me. Uh, but I did like the costume changes. I like the hokey costume and the, the other costume. And uh, not my favorite Marvel movie. Um, but definitely not a failure, like some other other attempts. I think it has potential, but it seemed very limited to me, like very kind of rushed for what it was. And uh, I guess that's all I can really say. Uh, Red Skull didn't really seem like a viable threat to the entire world to me. It didn't feel like they were trying to save the entire world from being taken over. It felt very confined to just one town and a couple, uh, you know, villainous outposts. But, mm. uh, you know, it is what it is. And uh, yeah. for the most part, I thought it was an enjoyable movie. I just didn't think that it was on par with, say, X-Men First Class or Blade or uh, some Fair of enough. the other previous Marvel movies. Hmm. I want to see Blade make a comeback. That would be nice. Uh, anyone yeah. else besides besides Nick who's seen Captain America? Uh, I, I haven't seen, haven't seen it yet. I've no. seen it. I, I saw it, it on DVD. I also saw it, MJ. Okay. Okay. Uh, can I go? Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, to me, Chris Evans, Hugo Weaving, Tommy Lee Jones, and Haley Atwell all played excellent roles. Uh, Tommy Lee Jones' character was very good. <laughs> um. Hugo Weaving was, was the perfect choice for uh, Red Skull. I mean, as you said, uh, he always plays villains, uh, but um, to tell you the truth, I've never actually, um, uh, before I saw the movie, I never actually knew any history about Captain America, except that it was based in World War II. But for me, the action sequences were so right. Uh, um, one part that was very funny is where um, uh, Captain America, uh, drove, well, Tommy Lee Jones drove uh, Hugo Weaving's car, and then Captain America had to jump on the plane. <laughs> then uh, Tommy Lee Jones says, "I'm not kissing you." <laughs> 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 uh, 
<laughs> that, <laughs> that wasn't you, Zane. <laughs> that, yeah, he, he actually uh, uh, kissed uh, the lady, but then he said that, but that was very funny. Um, t- uh, mentioning Tony Stark uh, was uh, really interesting. I mean, um, but what uh, really uh, that I couldn't understand is how they got Chris Evans to be so skinny, and then he comes up um, all muscles, you know? The magic of Total CGI. Technology. Total CGI. <laughs> yeah, but uh, everything was, to me, was enjoyable. And uh, at the end, seeing the uh, Samuel L. Jackson... Uh, making his appearance as Nick Fury was very interesting, uh, and also seeing uh, the trailer at the end of the Avengers uh, was also yeah. interesting. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the Avengers movie. So yeah, right. Yep. All right, Commander, you've seen it as well. Like I say, we don't know how long this connects with the go for, so keep yeah. it short and sweet. Uh, yeah, I saw it uh, on TV thanks to a buddy of mine. Um, I'm not as familiar with Cap as I am with, say, Spider-Man, Wolverine, Iron Man, guys like that. Um, so, basically, all I know about Cap is from Marvel Ultimate Alliance. So, this was uh, okay. kind of a new thing to me. Okay. Uh, overall, I thought it was, all, it was pretty good. Very well executed. Uh, very uh, Acting was pretty good. The CI was great. Body doubles did uh, pretty good. All right. And as for the tech, I think it was, uh, I think it might have been you, uh, Duran, who said it. Uh, they got, it's Tony Stark's dad, so that's the, uh, the reason for the tech. All right. Yep. Well, that's the reason for Captain America's tech. The other tech is the Cosmic Cube for the Spectre guys. Hmm. Yeah. Cosmic Cube is from 4. Oh, hmm. yes. I mean, uh, as, with, no, well, as for Avengers... As for Avengers next summer, I'm going to go with it with a somewhat open mind, but I have taken into consideration what people like Nick have said before. Because there are so many A-list characters that are going to be vying for the top spot, it's going to be a bit dicey just to see which way it goes. I mean, Iron Man is likely to take center stage because, to me, Iron Man, in my estimation, has become the face of Marvel because of the fact that, you know, the way his movies have been done, it's it's the standard that they that they need to meet to now. And of course, until we see what the Amazing Spider-Man is like next summer, you know, it's not really, you know, we're a bit unclear as to how that'll go. But for me, Iron Man is the face of Marvel for the moment, and. I still think it's uh, a bullshit decision to replace uh, Edward Norton as Bruce Banner. I mean, I got no nothing against Mark Ruffalo because I've never seen the guy act. But when Ed Norton was doing so well in that role, it it to me, I just look at him and think there's something not right there. You know, it was doing well. It made us forget about that piece of garbage that was Hulk 2003. I'm still trying to forget that movie. Um, but Hulk, t- Hulk 2008 was a vast improvement, made it more like the TV series, which is what it needed to be. And, you know, it just worked. And, f- you know, for them to suddenly make that change just like that, it's like something's not working there. But And is and there's a couple of other movies that I really want to get invented out of my system. Red Riding Hood, don't go watch it. You'll think you're watching Twi- you know, Twilight, but set in ye old medieval times with talking werewolves. Okay, moving away from that one straight away. <laughs> and second of all, the Yogi Bear movie. Why did I want to <laughs> yeah. go watch that? I'm sorry. You're a critic. You've got to put up with the shit sometimes. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I just took one look at I just watched that thought... You know, the CG was fine. I thought the 3D was decent, but... And, you know, and of course, the voice acting talent of Dan Aykroyd as Yogi Bear and Justin Timberlake as Boo Boo, which I never thought I would hear myself say that. <laughs> but I just <laughs> looked, it, it was just awful. I'm going to go so far to say that I would have probably enjoyed 2006 Miami Vice more than this. And you guys know how I feel about that movie. <laughs> That's so Yes, cool. indeed. I actually saw Miami... Miami Vice the movie with my cousin five years ago. I didn't I didn't like it. He even he admitted he didn't like it. 
That, that was just... It was terrible. It was a piece of really I've never seen Miami Vice, either the movie or the original. The movie. Ever. Ever. There's something that I want to add. Uh, sorry, MJ. Um, the thing that puzzles me is that uh, Stan Lee always gets a cameo around every single superhero movie. Yeah. That irritates me. And he didn't create. Well, Stan Lee had nothing to do with Captain America either. No. No, you wasn't. He didn't Captain America. No. That was. Uh, he didn't create. No, he did not. He started working for uh, Marvel when it was Timely Comics back then, but he had no hand in creating Captain America. Yeah. All right. I think we'll end time here, guys, just in case uh, we have even more technical difficulties. And I think we've done Agreed. very well just to make it this far. So uh, from the end of year movie panel with the Firebird that is the Phoenix... It was a pleasure to be here, MJ, as always. The passion of Duran Garber. Thank you, MJ. Always a pleasure to be here. The Commander. <laughs> Thanks for having me back, MJ. No problem. My reliable partner in crime, X24 Rider. Cheers, dude. It's been a blast. And, and, to, and to my brother, who's always watching my back, Mr. Nick Nugent. Always a pleasure to be here and to hang out with you fine people. Thank you. And unfortunately, Noom had to leave for other commitments, so if she if she's listening, thank you very much for attending, Noom. It's always a pleasure to have your company. And uh, all i got left to say for this panel, just before we go off, is Merry Christmas, have a good one, and let's just hope that 2012's an even better year for movies. Until next time, MJ Knight, signing off from Special Features. <laughs>